Hey, this cowboy's going Cajun for the day is, whoo, what are we talking about? A Louisiana traditional gumbo inspired by my good old friend Justin Wilson. Come on, I'm going to get the pot boiling and there's enough to feed us all. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by the backyard. Woo, it is a beautiful day that the Lord has made today. And what are we doing? What are we talking about? Mm, some gumbo. Yes, we are straight from the Louisiana Bayou, inspired by my good friend, Justin Wilson. Y'all have heard me reference him a lot. I used to sit in front of that TV and watch Justin cook and listen to his stories. And I'm thinking, hey, that old fella can cook. I wished I could have cooked with him. So be sure and check out other videos that we've done with Justin. We'll have you a link up there to where you can see them all. But hey, this takes a little time to make, but it is so delicious. Everything that we use will be down there in the little link down there below for the recipes. You know, the good folks at Ariot have really done a lot for our channel and they've kept me looking good. And we've had a link to where you can wear what I wear. But hey, they appreciate our audience so much that they're having an appreciation sale. They are October 13th through the 16th. And there'll be a little link down there below to where it says sale 25% off. You can look good as me, but hey, let's get to cooking. As my good friend Justin Wilson will tell you, the thing that is most important in the way you start this dish is with what? A roux. Now I'm not talking about the kind you see down under that be hopping. I'm talking about R-O-U-X. Sometimes they even put another X on it. Roux, a flour base with grease or butter that is gonna thicken and we need it to come to a really dark brown color. Now you can use olive oil and flour, but folks, I'm gonna use me a half cup of bacon grease. Mm, cause Bacon makes everything better. Now you want to start this in the house if you're doing it in there over about some medium low heat till you get all this bacon grease melted well. And then we're going to turn that down even just a little more. And this is going to take some constant stirring and whisking. So be ready to get your workout in. We're going to melt this grease really well. And I have me about one cup of flour in here. And I want you just to sift it in there slowly you can hear it sizzle there and you can see it and stir as you put it in. I don't like a lumpy roux. A lot of you might be asking, why ain't I using a spatula for this? Well, folks, we will after we get this incorporated well, but this whisk works really good to get this started. And you want to make sure you watch that fire, turn it down even lower if you need to, because we ain't going to burn this roux. Well, folks, you can see that has got a whole lot thicker since the last time you joined me there. And also, it has got us a golden brown color to it. I switched to my little mesquite wooden spatula because anytime you're doing something with cast iron and you need to stir wood against cast iron, you ain't never going to hurt it. Now, if you wanted to cook this in a cast iron skillet, you could and then transfer it over into a hot pre-warmed crock pot. But I just say, hey, get that Dutch oven out. I'm cooking it in my 14 today and you'll be good to go. You could also do this in a big stew pot or some of that enameled cast iron, but get you a thick bottom pot, whatever you got, cause you're gonna need it. So we are to that point and guess what? As my good friend Justin would say, I don't got me one large white onion. And we gonna dump him in there. I hear a little sizzle I did. One humongous large giant green bell pepper chopped. And these are just rough chopped folks. And then what is this? About four garlic cloves. So I want you to go ahead and mix all that in there with that roux. Get it all blessed up in there together. And you can see how that roux has attached itself to everything that was thrown up in it. That's what I'm after folks. And we gonna let this cook probably five or six minutes with these veggies in there cause I want them onions to get what Justin called translucent. Uh-huh. We want to see through them things, nearly, but not. Let them bell peppers get tender. So just keep stirring. You be telling yourself, man, I wish I could add some broth to it right now or something. Uh-uh. No, you just keep stirring. We're going to get them onions and bell peppers sauteed in this roux. And it is, ooh, going to be some that good. Well, we've been cooking on them onions and peppers and garlic about probably close to 10 minutes, folks, for them to get tender and warm through. Now, a lot of people are just going to add water to this for some liquid, but now I'll be wanting you to use some beef broth, a whole box, which is 32 ounces or four cups, and I want you to warm it because I want to put that warm in there so that roux don't try to jump up there and say, oh my gosh, that was cold. Now I'm going to clump up on you. 
Nobody likes clumpy roux. So we have done warm this. It is unsalted beef broth. Pour you about half in there, and I want you to stir. Woo wee! I guarantee told you there's some flavor coming out of that pot. And things is getting thick right there, you can see. Mm. We're back on that low medium heat. I just want you to stir this for a while so you don't have it thickening up too quick. And if it begins to thicken a little, you can add you a little water or some more broth. All right, to that, we have one and a half pounds of andouille sausage. Justin called it some andouille. I've pronounced it andouille for a long time till some of them Louisiana folks that's good friends of mine said, no, andouille sausage. Now, we go ahead and just chunk this up this way. Just go ahead and layer up in there. I want you to take three of them bay leaves. And remember, we're going to fish them out when it's over, so I don't want you to crush them in there. I just want you to put them in there, and then we're going to stir generously. Now, a lot of recipes be saying using you some Cajun seasoning, okay? Now, I have used that Tony Saturese in the past, but I got to where I just make my own, and the recipe for that making your own will be down there in the little link below with the regular recipe. And it's going to take about this much. And then we will season again right there at the last to our suiting. But this has got some smoked paprika to it, some oregano, but some red pepper in there to give it a little bite. And guess what? We got to have some of this Crystal's Louisiana hot sauce because Justin told me you got to have that in there. How much? I'd say about that much right there. That is probably what you call the correct amount. And don't forget to put you some thyme leaves in there, dried. And if the wind's blowing, you got to know which way it's coming from. Give it a gentle stirring to get all them ingredients going there around. Mm. Now, I'm going to tell you, gumbo can be having a lot of things in it. Now, we started out with this andouille sausage, and as it gets closer in this cooking process, because we're going to let this simmer for about an hour to get all them flavors just coming together, but then, folks, if you're using chicken and you got it cut up, go ahead and put it in there now. And you don't want to be browning that chicken up and then putting it in there because you're losing some of that flavor that that chicken's going to have. You can use a whole chicken, backs, necks, gizzards, everything you got, or you can just put thighs and legs in there, whatever you want to do. But when we get about an hour into this process, we're going to throw us in about a pound and a half to two pounds of shrimp in there mm, and just let it cook a little bit. And then I got a secret surprise for you that even Justin would love, so don't run off and leave me. Well, folks, glad you stuck around with me, and we've been on about an hour. Mm. I know a lot of you is tempted right now just to say, you don't have to go no further, Ken. We, we're just going to stop, turn it off, let it cool, we're going to eat it, and some of you ain't even going to let it cool, but hang on, because we ain't near through. Now, Justin's always telling me that you got to use some of this Worcestershire sauce, and we're going to put about, I'd say, that much in there, that which much. is the right amount. Now, to that, I got two pounds of peeled, washed, skint little shrimps. Raw. Raw, uh-huh. I mean, they uncooked. Now, if you're down there on the Gulf, y'all can get that stuff fresh. Fresh is the best you can get. I just ask you to dump that in there. Let's go ahead and give that a stirring. Whew, man, I'm already hungry. Now, many times I watched Justin and he reached under the cupboard. Do y'all know what he was after? You in the back row by the third seat by the watermelon. No, it wasn't peanut butter. You over there by the tree. Yes, you are right. It was wine. And he loved to put some sauterne wine in this, but folks, they don't make that where I come from. And I told you I was putting a cowboy twist on it. Look here. Hatch green chili wine. Now you can use a white wine, but I prefer a little sweeter wine with this. And this got a kick. If you're wondering, hey, I think I've seen the cowboy drag this out before. Sure did in the caveman steak video we did. It was a good year. It was a really good year for hatch green chilies. Now you can put two, three, four cups but Justin always said, don't put so much meat in there, you ain't got room for the wine, okay? Because we need the wine. So we're going to probably go about two cups and... Oh, we'll just go ahead and do two, Shan. <laughs> I've seen Justin do that many times, so 
Folks, all we got to do now is let that come back to a slow simmer for about 45 minutes. We're going to boil us up a little rice. Mm, we're going to serve that over it, and it's going to be some of that good. So let me get the lid back on it. Don't quit me yet, folks, because we're going to see the end result. Folks, that there is what I call looking some of that delicious. As Justin would say, I gar and told you that's going to be good. Now, I have learned a lot through cooking, and I ain't going to about to take a bite of it, not just yet, till it cools off. Steamed us up some rice. Mm, this is going to be so good over at that broth. I'm going to start right here with this bite, and I'm going to get me one of these little shrimpies in there. Mm, there is so much great aroma coming from that. Is it still hot? Probably. Hmm. Mm. Do the Bayou Boogie. The Bayou Boogie. Make you feel so good. Make you want to chop wood, build a fire, and cook some gumbo today. Cause, mm, pardon me folks, but I'm going back again. And I've had one loyal helper the whole time out here. Get that spice off there and that bell pepper. You have been so good to help me today, and I want to thank you. No, I don't know if you got any Cajun blood in you, but you're a hound in your track. Hang on, you got manners. Hang on, not yet. Okay, good pup. Thank you so much. Well, folks, mm, the flavors in here just jump out at you. And Justin, my friend, I hope we've done you proud, brother, because uh, I always enjoyed you. You was my kind of people, and you was polite, had manners, and you was a good cook. And, folks, this is so simple to make. Like I say, just a little time-consuming, but, ooh, it is well worth the effort. And guess what? Don't be forgetting the Ariot people down there that's having the sale 25% off. There'll be a little link down there. And, as always, I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag flying over camp. No matter where me and Shannon be, that flag going to be flying. Shan, my love, thank you, sweetheart, for always making me look good. Ariot, Andy, he is the person that does some of the editing. And guess what? God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the traditional cowboy gumbo trail. Hey, a quick, I forgot you. <clears throat> oh, my gosh. Hey, I had a forgot you moment because I forgot to tell you folks I'm going to be in Branson, Missouri the last two weeks of October, Silver Dollar City. Hey, you can check out our events on our little website. It'll tell you where we're at, but there'll be a link down there to where you can catch us, me. Come up there. Be glad to see you. We'll have a cup of coffee and mm, 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 good. Ready to go, sugar booger?